Hi, my name's Joel Gelpi, and I wrote the music and the orchestrations for The Good Person of Set Swarm. One of the things that I really wanted to do was have a diverse group of instruments that wouldn't necessarily go together. And one of the great things about it is we waited until we saw who we wanted to cast in the show based on their acting ability, and then we found out what instruments they played, and that's how I wrote the orchestrations for it. And then there's one song that sort of imitates the pitter-patter of rain, and for that I wrote a song that just uses kalimba, or African thumb piano, accompaniment. So it's a lot of interesting um, music there. The lyrics were originally in German by Bertolt Brecht, and then the adapter slash translator for the production, Tony Kushner, wrote his own lyrics, and so those are the lyrics that I'm using. So that was an additional challenge, because a lot of times in the past I've written my own lyrics, but this was an extra special challenge to take lyrics that already existed, and I think it it actually helped me create more interesting music than I might normally create if I wrote my own lyrics because I had to figure out, like a puzzle, how to fit the pre-existing lyrics into musical phrases and adjust here and there. So that's how I approached it and of course I tried to make it make each song its own special entity with different instrumentation. I'm Lena Foreman and I'm the scenic designer for The Good Person of Setswan. The creative process for the show was actually um, pretty straightforward. Norm came to the table really wanting to set this play in a circus world, so that was really helpful in sort of developing a concept because we already kind of had a world with rules to work with, and we took that a little bit further. Because the show is wrecked, we wanted to, to really show the mechanics of the this sort of circus-like theater, so we added this poor theater aesthetic to the circus and we made it into this sort of traveling band of circus actors coming into the space and refurbishing it for their own purposes. With that came uh, sort of lots of rundown um, props, sort of things made into other things that the actors just sort of reappropriated for their uses. I'm Eric Herskowitz and I'm the lighting designer for The Good Person of Szechuan. The first time I read the script, I just read it for fun, not as if I'm a part of the show at all or anything with the show. I'm just reading it for pleasure so I can just get a little base of the story in it. Second time I read it, I think of it from my perspective as the lighting designer. I start thinking of needs in each scene, what I can do to help out, what I think of sometimes with what might be going on with the scene, what theme we're trying to tell. Um, I really won't know what direction we're going until I have the first design meeting, of course, but going to that design meeting I will bring visual research of either pictures that express either color to me or the situation that we're feeling. It doesn't have to be an exact picture of what's going on in the show, it just has to be something that to me expresses what either the characters are feeling or the theme of the play itself. We really thought of going in the direction of a circus type theme to it. Right off the bat from that, my, my visual research just completely changed because I initially didn't think that, but once, I, once we heard it, I knew we had to go that way because everybody else was going that way and it worked. Since we're a design team, we all have to work together. So then I come back with more visual research and after seeing the costumes and the set, I can then start making my lighting plot. I'm Scott Halstead. I'm the sound designer for Good Person of Szechuan. All of our sound effects are naturally made by the actors and their instruments. So, what the important part of my design was really getting microphones in there because there's five or six songs written into the script and there's no music for it, so we actually got Joel Gelpi to compose the, uh, the music and he did a great job with it, and I'm really excited. So we have these m microphones, uh, because the songs suddenly step out of the world of the theater and really are more of a presentational idea. And the gods also are mic'd, and because they're gods, they, they don't, they're not in the same world as the rest of the actors. So we have the gods mic'd to make them seem a lot bigger than the world. After I figure out all the stuff that we need for this show, I then can work on my system and sound plot. Where I really, I just, it's a drawing of the theater and I just place the speakers where I want them based on 
like what it has to cover, who has to hear it at certain times, and I have to think about what I want it to sound like. I'm Laura Brennan. I'm playing Mrs. Mitsu, the landlady, in The Good Person of Setswan, and I'm also playing the trumpet, which has been very exciting. This is the, the second opportunity I've had to play an instrument in a show at Ithaca College. Um, so that's very exciting, and it's, it's fun to add the music rehearsal process into um, our rehearsal process for this play. It's a play with music, really, and we are so lucky to have um, Joel Gelpi composing this incredibly fun, challenging music. The play examines what does it mean to actually be a good person, and do we need to really identify people like that? Um, Kira, who plays Shante slash Shui Ta, has a line, your world is too hard. So what is, is it, what is it about the world that makes staying a good person so unachievable?